Hello. So, since I'm making a horror game, one of the things I've been doing is really studying horror. And, um, one of the, the things I found helpful, uh, is, uh, Chris Pruitt has a survival horror game blog. And, uh, so I read through a lot of that. It was extremely helpful. But he also recommended two books, uh, The Philosophy of Horror and, uh, Stephen King's Dance Macabre. Um, and I, I read through these books, and they're, they're very helpful, but one of the things that they made me realize is that horror in games is hard. Um, because I think, to some extent, in, in other mediums, it's somewhat formulaic. So if you look at the philosophy of horror, they basically outline two... Um, there's basically just two... Uh, plot structures of horror movies and stories and their derivations thereof. So the first one is called the Complex Discovery. And so there's a bunch of different variations, but basically there's the onset of the monster, like the monster goes and kills someone. There's Discovery, oh people realize there's a monster. There's Confirmation, so, oh, you know, it, there's really is a monster, we've seen it, or, like, telling other people, like, getting other people to agree with them. Then there's confrontation, so then they fight the monster. So, that's basically one, and then the other is sort of the overreacher structure, which is more along the lines of Frankenstein, where the people are actually creating the monster. And so, in Dance Macabre, there's something similar where basically he breaks down the structure and, and a lot of horror stories uh, are essentially derivatives of Dracula or, um, or uh, Frankenstein or Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And so certainly, you know, Frankenstein and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde are sort of the, the overreacher um, in, the, in the philosophy of a horror book. And then, uh, Dracula and, um, I forgot the other one I said, but that, that's, uh, the sort of, um, complex discovery. And so, like, uh, Stephen King argues zombies are sort of derivative of vampires, I mean, in that they're consuming people and they were people. But if you look at horror in games, it's a lot harder to do. Uh, just because you can't really follow a plot structure where basically, you know, people discover something and then they have to prove that it exists and things like that because a lot of that hinges on characters and their reactions and their interactions with other characters. So in, in Jaws, for example, they have to prove to the police chief or whatever that it's actually a giant shark or that they didn't actually catch it things things of that nature but that doesn't really lend itself to to games and I mean certainly I have an interest in horror films and you know at one point I was well I still sort of toss around the idea I would love to make a, a horror film but uh, you know it seemed pretty straightforward, but then when I approach horror in games, it, it turns out it's really not as, as straightforward as, as I had hoped or as it is in other media. And it's possible just there haven't been enough horror games for people to really understand the rules. Um, but also I think it's just different in, in games and, and interactivity is, is uh, you have different ways of, of confronting the player and certainly most games are combat focused and so uh, if you have a bunch of combat then you worry there's sort of a balance at least in my mind between you know horror and action and so like Dead Space especially the last one to me is, is a little bit more towards the the action side of things than the horror. I mean, certainly I enjoyed the games, except, well, 3 wasn't great, but um, but they didn't feel quite like a, a horror game to me. So I think that's something that, that I'm still giving a lot of thought and, and I'm experimenting with is, 
what's the best way to bring horror to games and you know what's been done and and what what new things can i bring to the table